something great for you to hear today. I believe that many hearts can be touched as you just open yourself up to whatever it is God has for you today. So as we do this next song, just let these words speak to your heart and encourage you about how amazing, how beautiful, and how wonderful our God is. What a beautiful name. 
us this week, no matter what the doctor's reports have said, no matter what uh, our friends have said or our families have looked like, no matter the arguments and disagreements, no matter how hard the job has been, no matter what we go through in life, today we stand because nothing stands against you, God. So today, we raise our hands, not not as a a sign of surrender, but we raise it because we surrender our lives because we know that victory is coming. We raise our hands because we surrender to the one who does the impossible, the everlasting God. And no matter, God, where people are at today, no matter how hard, no matter where you've come from today, you come into this place, I'm here to tell you that before you leave today, you will know one thing. You will know that God is powerful and God is great. And no matter what you're facing, he is there for you. He loves you and cares about you today because he is a powerful, awesome working God. And there is none like you. So, Lord, we give it to you right now. We ask you, God, in the next few moments of time, you speak to hearts, you encourage lives, and most importantly, God, you remind us how powerful you are, how great you are, and there is none like you, God. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen, amen. amen. I started a new series last week called Anxious for Nothing. Turn to your neighbor and say, Anxious for Nothing. Turn to another neighbor and say, Nothing. Nothing. Anxious for Nothing. Well, we are trying to discover how we can live this life with a lower threshold of anxiety. Because the fact is, we live in a very anxious world. Many of you sitting here today are dealing with a lot of anxiousness, a lot of anxious thoughts, a lot of anxious agendas, a lot of things that are pressing their way in. And the goal of this series is to realign us with how God wants us to handle the anxieties in our lives. Are they real? Yes. Do they happen? Yes. However, God wants us to walk with him and allow him to take a lot of those anxious feelings that we feel and to carry them for us. And so last week we started learning with this one truth, and this truth is this, that the Lord is near. We have, we can, we can lower our anxiousness by understanding and reminding ourselves the Lord is what? The Lord is near, near that he's near us that he cares for us. He sees the struggles you're going through. He knows the burdens you're under. He understands what's pressing in on you. And because of that, he is near to you. You may not feel him. You may not sense him. But sometimes the reason why we don't feel him, we don't hear him, we don't feel like he's close is because he's so near and he's whispering so quietly, but the noise and all the anxiety is drowning out the voice and the whispers of God. And so there's times that we just got to settle and quiet our souls, and we have to ask God, God, where do I need to be with you in this? How do I find a place of peace even in the middle of my anxious thoughts? Understand this, that anxiety is, is breeded and born 
and the battlefield of our minds. That it is our mind where we begin the seed of anxious thoughts. We begin to overthink things. We begin to analyze things. Maybe we get a phone call in that, that's just heart-wrenching. Maybe we begin to think I'm not good enough or I'm a failure. I'll never measure up. Then what we do is because we have these anxious thoughts, we have to convince the world that we don't have anxious thoughts. And so we begin to put a fake facade up. We begin to filter our world. We begin to not tell the real truth and not be real and authentic about what we're really going through. And so it begins to put out the hashtag blessed on everything. Why? Because my life is so perfect, but really it's so full of anxiety. It's so full of anxious thoughts that it's just spiraling out of control. So many of us sitting here today feel sad. We feel anxious. Some of us feel lost today. Others of us feel like we don't know how we're going to move to the next day. This battle that happens, this anxiety battles inside of our mind. And so what I want to do is I want to look at Philippians chapter 4. It's the, it's the prescription against anxiety. It is, the, it is the verses that challenge us about how we're to approach anxious and anxious thoughts in our lives. How do we deal with it? Philippians chapter 4 tells us how. If you have your Bibles, open them up and read it with me. Now, let me just say before, before I get into this, remember who writes this, who's writing this. This is written by a man named Paul. Paul was a great, valiant fighter for the kingdom of God. Paul, though, because he spoke against the religious people, finds himself under arrest by the Roman, by the Roman soldiers, and he's under 24-hour house arrest. He has limited freedom, limited ability, always being watched, always being under the scrupulous eye because he's on his way to stand trial before the emperor. Now, here's what's interesting. Here's how Paul starts off Philippians chapter 4. Say it with me. He says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Oh, that's pitiful. That's pitiful. That's horrible, guys. A little more enthusiasm, a little more charisma. Let's say it again. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. What is Paul thinking here? He's in prison. He's a prisoner. He's on his way to what could be his death sentence. And he is saying, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. He goes on to say, this is why he rejoices. He says, let your gentleness be evident to all. Why? The Lord is what we learned about last week. Here's our passage today. Do not what? Do not be about, but in in. Every situation, by prayer petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and what will happen as a result. And the peace of God. And the peace of God. I'm waiting. And the peace of God. Which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Help us today, God, with our anxious thoughts, the thought life that is out of control, the thought life that is surrendered to the cares of this world and not surrendered to the will of God. Lord, help us with our anxious thoughts today, I pray. May you shake us and may you challenge us to the core. I rebuke right now in the name of Jesus any distractions from this message because I believe that this message today is going to be life-changing for so many in this room because, Lord, you have the power to do the impossible in every situation. You can do the impossible in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. What are you worried about today? What are you anxious about today? Your job, your family, a relationship? What are you anxious about today? Your future, a decision you got to make? What holds you paralyzed with fear and worry today? What is that anxious thing that you have? Do you have it? If when you have your anxious thought, I want you to put your hand up in there and I want you to grab it. Grab your anxious thought. Or do it with me. Come on now. Everybody can participate with this. This is good stuff. You got it? You got that anxious thought? Now bring it down. You're going to hold on to that for just a little bit. 
clench your fist as tight as you can. It's going to feel, it's going to feel pain in a little bit because that's what anxiety does. We grab a hold of it, it grabs a hold of our life, and it literally paralyzes us from what God wants to do. What is anxiety? Anxiety can be psychological, anxiety can be emotional, anxiety can be situational, anxiety can be seasonal. Anxiety, though, in my opinion, in all circumstances, all the time, is always spiritual. Anxiety is always spiritual. It always is a battle between God's spirit trying to guide us and us thinking we have the right to control things in our world, things in our life. See, so what happens is, in order for us to cope with anxiety, we go see a doctor or we go to counseling and those are great things. We get, maybe we, maybe we start a diet. Maybe we figure out how to do some supplements or we try to figure out how to fix it. We get a prescription maybe to kind of level us out. And those are all powerful things, but nothing can beat the power of God. Amen. Nothing can beat or, t- or contend with the power of God. Amen. I don't know. Some of you might get it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Smanner of applause. Appreciate that. I want to challenge you with this today, this thought. Anxiety is spiritual, and because it's spiritual, it calls us to an action, and the action is to pray. The action is to petition God, to constantly bring whatever it is that we're struggling with over and over again before God. The, 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 the action is giving thanks to God because he can do the impossible. The action is we are going to bring our anxiety to God. Anxiety is that thing that creeps up in our life. That's the warning light that something is wrong. Anxiety is a, it can be a good thing if we recognize something's wrong and we try to figure out how to find a solution. Anxiety is that thing, that car light in your car that's, that's illuminated that says there's something wrong with the car. You can either fix it or wait for it to burn out. It's up to you. But the problem never goes away. Anxiety is that signal alarming you, time to pray. Time to take it to God. It's an indicator If it's big enough to worry about, it's big enough to pray about. If it's big enough to worry about, it's big enough to pray about. The verse says, be anxious about nothing, but in everything, with constant prayer and petition, present present your request to God, and he, he, his peace will come upon you. So what is it to you today? What is it to you today that presses its way in. If it's on your heart, if it's on your mind, it's on God's heart. God cares for you. God sees where you're at, and he wants you to bring your request to him. And that does not mean when you present your request to him that all of a sudden he's going to do it. He's not a Santa Claus God. He doesn't do what you want him to do because it's on your wish list. He does what's best for you. In fact, when you bring your requests to God, you bring them to him with no expectations but to release your fears and worries back to him. So I've done this message quite a bit, and I think that the challenge that we all face in this message is, if we're being real about this today, is not, we really are not comfortable with praying. Okay? God is great. God is good. Let us thank him for our food. We're good with that kind of prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. What a horrible prayer. If I should die before I wake, seriously, this is a very horrible prayer. And morbid, right? Die before I wake. I pray the Lord my soul to take. I mean, there's nothing better to put the last thought in your kid's mind. You're going to die tonight. You better be prayed up. I'm ready to go. <laughs> right? But this is, this, is, this is the challenge that I think we face in, in life is just being real, how many guys just think about this? We really don't know how to talk to God. We're being real. We don't understand that, that how God, how do we communicate with the omnipotent, that means all-powerful, 
all-knowing, omniscient God. How in the world do Kevin, Daryl, that's my middle name, Hardcastle, how does Kevin Daryl talk to God? Huh, he's big, he's huge, he's massive. He could take my life like that if he wanted to. He is omnipotent, an all-knowing God. How do I talk with God? How do we talk with God? It's very intimidating, if I'm being real. It's overwhelming at times. How do we, what are we calling? Is it dad? Is it father? Is it holy God, holy father? What, how do we address him? Do we do it in the King James? Hearken thou us, O fathereth. My heart is as heaviest. Cometh and healeth thy misselfeth. Is that how we talk to God, King James style? How do we, how do we handle the Holy Spirit? We're, Holy Spirit's around us all the time. He's here right now, moving in here, talking to you, encouraging your hearts, encouraging this message. You're hearing the word. It's touching your hearts. It's touching your ears. God's doing something powerful. How do we, the Holy Spirit is with us all the time. When you're driving in your car and you get angry at that person and you want to say some words or you say some words, the Holy Spirit does not get out of your car because you're saying words. He's still there. Still hearing you. How do we do it? What if, what if I'm praying and I fall asleep? Does God get angry at me because <laughs> I fell asleep? I bored myself to sleep. Wow. Some of you say you do, some of you say, Pastor Kevin, you do that every Sunday morning, but thank you. You bore me to sleep. Does God get mad? Does God get upset with us? How do we pray? How do we, how do we ask? How do, we say prayer and re- petitions. What, what if what I ask for is pretty trivial and pretty small and pretty just minute and I'm asking God for it? You know, someone else is asking to be healed of cancer and I'm asking for a sale on a dress. <laughs> Seems awful trivial, right? How do we talk? with God. How do we call? I mean, and then you got these people and you know who they are. You'll hear them pray. And it's like they went to prayer school, (laughs) right? I mean, they're praying and you're over there and you're just being blessed by their prayers. Like, Oh my gosh, I cannot talk to God. That is amazing prayer. It's like they are so in tune. And then you got these people that, man, they start quoting scripture, right? They start quoting scripture in their prayer and you're like, oh, well now, they definitely got the authority. They just use God's word, man. It's got to be good. It's a, that's a done prayer. That's done. That's a done prayer, right? How do we talk with God? How do we deal with this, this chasm between us and God? Because quite honestly, if we're being honest today, many of us don't pray, neither like we should. Many of us don't think about it. In fact, if we do think about it, it's the last resort, not the first It's once we've done everything we could do and we've messed it up even more than what we thought we could. And then we say, okay, well, I give up, God. I'll come to you now. I can't figure out my finances, so God, I'll come to you and you can help me figure them out. I can't figure out my kids, so God, I'll come to you and I'll bring them to you and I'll ask you for help. Well, here's what scripture says. It says, pray about everything. Present your request to God, not demands, requests to God, not demands. So here's here's how we begin the prayer mentality. First off, let your needs be known. If you have your notes, you can write that down or put it in your margins. Let your needs be known. That's what the Greek actually means. The Greek actually means to let your request be known. Let your needs be known to God. As a parent, I have two kids. Some of you have more kids than than I do, and so you'll, this, this story will make way more sense than even my story does. I have two kids, so I can only speak from two kids' standpoint. Two kids. Both of them approach me and Michelle in totally different ways. They're not the same. And you may have this. You may have a kid that communicates to you better through text or through, through, through a non-face-to-face face conversation. Or you may have kids that want to call you up and maybe they want to talk to you for like 45 minutes an hour. You may have these kids that, that they, they wait to the end of the day and at 1030 they come into your room and that's when they want to talk to you at 1030 at night when you're about to go to sleep. You may have these kids that they're like little attorneys. They present their case in such a, such a just amazing debatable way. You feel like 
you can't even compete with them. They're just like, they're little attorneys, right? Then you have these kids that like, they bring data to you. Well, dad, you know, if they did, blah, blah, and I, searched, I researched this and here's all the stuff I found. And, and then they present, and we all have kids that do di- different things in different ways. Then you have these kids, they do all of them. And they're just, they just, they're, they exhaust you. They, they, they text you, they call you, they, they hound you, they, they scream, they yell, they pout, they stomp their feet. They need the demons casted out of them. That's what they need. They, they, they just need Jesus all the way around. But either way, it doesn't matter. We all are just as our kids approach us in different ways. I want to tell you this. How do you pray? You pray the way you approach God. Listen, you don't pray and you approach God the way that I pray and the way I approach God. I do it my way. I do it my way. You do it your way. You talk to God with the honor and respect that he's due, and he will listen to you because you are coming to him and you are spending time with him. You ask him. You, you, uh, you go to him, and maybe you write out a prayer request. Maybe you write out something you're wanting from God. You sing Maybe your prayers to God, or maybe you shout them out, or maybe sometimes you get angry in your prayer time, and you let it be known you're angry. Guess what? God can handle your little anger. It's nothing compared to what else he's had to deal with in life. He can handle it. As a dad, I feel honored when my kids come to me looking for advice or needing something from me. I feel I feel like as an earthly father, I want to do what I can to help them. And this is the same way our heavenly father is. In every situation with prayer and petition, uh, present your needs to God. You have anxiety. It's a warning light. That warning light says to pray. And when we pray, we come as we are, no better, no worse, just as we are. Here's what 1 Peter says. 1 Peter 5, 68 says, 6 through 8 says, Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand. I'm coming back to that in a minute. That he, might, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast what? Cast it. Say cast. All. Say it better than that. Cast all. all your anxiety on him. Why? Because he cares for you. Then he gives a warning. Be alert and a sober mind. Your enemy, the devil is roaring around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Now, I always found those scriptures to be interesting that it's very positive at the first. Humble yourself under therefore, under God's mighty hand. He will lift you up in due season. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Wow, that's good positive stuff. I like that. And then he says, but be alert because the devil, the father of confusion, the, the, the creator of anxiety and chaos, The one who stirs it all up, be aware, because just as soon as you bring it to God, he's going to want to take it back and put it on you, and you bring that anxiety right back there with you. Cast all your anxieties upon you, because he cares for you. What's interesting about this is these verses are written by Peter. This is the same Peter, disciple Peter that denied Jesus three times. This is the same Peter writing these letters that was the one that one day when they were out on a boat and the boat storm was going all around them and they look off and the disciples are in the boat and they see this ghost on the water. And they said, there's a ghost out on the water. And they're like, that's not ghost, that's, that's Jesus. And Peter says, Peter says, hey, Jesus, if it's you, Let me come to you on the water. Now, Peter gets a bad rap for a lot of stuff, but one thing Peter was, he was bold. And Jesus said, come on, come on out here with me. Peter steps over the boat, over the safety of the boat, and walks out on the water and begins to walk to Jesus. That's that's bad. That's good stuff right there. That's that guy, he's, he's number one in my book, man. That guy had, I, I don't know if I'd done it. I don't know about you guys. I'd be like, yeah, Jesus, just when you get, come on in the boat when you're ready. I'm here. I'm waiting on you, right? But what happens? Peter begins to think in his mortal mind, this cannot be possible. 
And he begins to look on the outward circumstance of the storm and the raging sea and everything around him. And what happens is he begins to sink because he got outside. He first had his eyes on Jesus. He had his first had his eyes on the one who was going to take him through. And the minute he turned away, the minute the bills came in, the minute the mortgage was due, the minute the marriage began to fall apart, the minute that, that you, you begin to have the problems of life press in, we get our eyes off God, we get our eyes off Jesus, and we begin to sink and consumed with anxiety and fear. And Jesus goes over and takes, lifts, puts his hand down and lifts Peter up out of the water and brings him into the boat. And in that story, there's several different things. It says this, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand. Let me tell you something. God's mighty hand, no matter how deep you may feel, no matter how hurt you may be, no matter how fearful you may feel at times or anxious, you may feel paralyzed with anxiety in your life today. I'm here to tell you, no matter how far you go, God's mighty hand, the mighty hand of Jesus will lift you up. You may lose sight at times in life. You may lose sight that he is in charge of your life. You may lose sight when the bills are due or the assignments are due. You may lose sight in life when you're trying to walk through it. Because see, what we do is this. Rather than trying to produce our way through it, we need to pray our way to the one who can bring us to the other side. The one who rescues us out of the storms of life. Here at Crossview, we do something, I referred to it in our worship just a little bit ago, and I'll kind of go into a little bit deeper here, is here at Crossview, we believe in the, the uh, we, you'll see it, this happen a lot, not happen to all the churches, but you'll see several people, not everybody, but they'll lift their hands in worship. Um, some people have never done that before coming to Crossview, others have do, started doing it over time, so others don't do it, and it's no problem if you do or don't, but let me tell you kind of what Lifted hands signify in our world two things. Lifted hands signify victory. Whenever you win, whenever you, you know, any NASCAR you watch, they get out of the car, what do they do? Lift their hands up in the air. Balboa wins against Rocky 27. What happens? Hands up in the air, right? Victory, victory, victory. That's one thing that it means. The second thing it means, it also means surrender. Stick them up. Surrender. Here at Crossview, though, I see lifted hands represent both and the same. When we surrender, there is victory in Jesus. When we surrender, we cast all of our anxieties upon him. Why? Because he cares for us. That word cast is like a lure on the end of a thing, throwing it out and not bringing it back. You're getting rid of it. You're casting that anxiety as far away from you as you can. See, cycle of anxiety, this is in your notes, it's three steps. First off, you have an anxious thought or anxious feeling. It starts to creep its way in. Secondly, you try to control that and try to fix it, and you try to do something about it. Why I feel anxious, I gotta fix it, I gotta do something about it. And then thirdly, when you can't control it, fear sets in. And it begins to paralyze you. And it begins to hold you back. So how do we break the cycle of anxiety? How do we break it? We recognize that you don't have the power to control everything. But every one of us in this room have the power to surrender our control to God. I cannot control everything, but I can control my surrender to God. And sometimes when I lift my hands, I lift them as a sign of surrender but victory in Jesus because he understands the anxieties of my life. I don't always have the power to control, but I do have the power to surrender. Humble yourself under God's mighty hand and he will lift you up. Understand this, hear these verses today. God is working all things out for the good of those who love him according to called according to his purpose. Hear this verse. It says, believe that no weapon formed against you will prosper. Why? Because our God is greater. Believe this today. God is for you. And if God is for you, no one or nothing can be against you. So what is there to have fear about? What is the anxiety about? What's weighing on you? Grab it again. 
What is that anxiety? Grab that again. Grab that anxiety. Grab it. I want you to pull it down. What burdens are you carrying? What anxious thoughts are you holding? What fear has paralyzed you? Finances, future, job. Maybe, maybe it's a marital situation. Maybe, maybe today it's worry about never getting married or finding a love, finding someone to love you. Or maybe today your fear is college or an aging parent. Whatever it is, grab it. Grab that anxiety. I want you to pull it in. I want you to pull it in. I want you to hear these words. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. The Lord, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, with prayer, petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and He will guide your steps. So, Lord, we are grabbing this anxiety. We're grabbing these fears. We're grabbing these things that consume our lives. We're holding them now, but God, soon, we're going to release them back to you. We're going to release them back to the one who can do the impossible, the one who moves, the one who, who sees the struggles of our life. God, we begin to right now release them back to you. Release these, God, back to you. Head bowed and eyes closed. You're here today. You're struggling with that anxiety. You're struggling with that fear that presses its way in, that fear that tries to overwhelm you. As we sing this song, and in just a few moments, we're going to do something today that's different than what we've done before. We're going to ask just that you would prepare your hearts because I believe today there's going to be some anxiety broken, some fears taken away, some freedoms given because you have come to this place praying through the pain, praying through the pain, pain praying through the things that press their way in to your life.
in the storm. 